thyroid gland, when you look at a section of it under the microscope, it looks unlike any other tissue in the body. It jumps out at you. You think, I don't know what that is. That's the thyroid. I'll show you why. Um, do you know that the thyroid gland stores iodine? So we'll, we'll see how that's stored. Um, the thyroid gland is, of course, the endocrine organ in the neck, superficial in the neck, kind of wrapping around the trachea and the upper cartilage is there. The thyroid gland, its main job is making thyroid hormones. Hormones pass through the blood to affect cells and tissues often at a distance from where they're produced. And the thyroid hormones essentially regulate the basal metabolic rate of the cells in the body, how active they are. Um, oh, looks like we've got a bit of uh, parathyroid on there as well. So we'll have a look at that. And that's another point. The thyroid gland has another function. Yeah, take a look at this. Can you see that little dot next to it? I'm guessing that's a parathyroid gland. There are four parathyroid glands on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland, and they are related to one of the functions of the thyroid gland, but not the thyroid hormone bit. If we have a look at that under the microscope, we'll see if I'm right or not, because it'll, uh, it'll, it'll look quite different. Let's have a look and see, see what we got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. That doesn't look like anything else. What we're looking at there is we've got um, lots of follicles, so balls of a solidish something. It's a bit of a squidgy something, really, colloid, surrounded by a single layer of cells. And look at that. We can see that. Oh, yeah, look over there. That is quite different. So that is... That's going to be a parathyroid gland. We'll get to that at the end. Um, but yeah, if we look through here, we can see there's a cut edge there and there's a fold there. That's a bit messy, but that happens. We can see fat around the outside. Now, there is a bit of a capsule um, around the thyroid gland, and we may be seeing hints of that, but we're seeing lots of wide open cells there, right? That, those are adipocytes storing fat. Um, but what we're interested in is this stuff in here. This is the, the meat of the thyroid gland. And as usual, we can see little blood vessels in there because being, a, um, being an endocrine organ, it's got a great blood supply. There are capillaries everywhere because this is a ductless gland. The cells produce the hormone into the tissue around them, goes into the blood through the capillaries and off around the body. Right? There's no duct. Ducts are when you're secreting something onto an external surface. Right. So this is my wide, my widest lens, my lowest power. That's a four times magnification and 10 times magnification, so 40 times to my eye. This is now 100 times magnification. Doesn't look like any other tissue anywhere else in the body. So what we're seeing there is in the center, in the, you know, that, the colloid, that is thyroglobulin. And that thyroglobulin is, is where the iodine is bound up. And the reason there's thyroglobulin here is that is that is the material that the cells will use to make the thyroid hormones T3 and T4, triiodothyronine and thyroxine. And those are the hormones that will then go off out into the body when needed to, to uh, regulate the metabolic rate of the cells of the body. Now, if we go to a higher power, so this must be 200 times magnification to my eye. Um, if you can see lines going across the colloid, that's, the, uh, that's made by the very, very sharp blade that cut these sections. You're seeing what's left, impressions left by the blade. Oh, look, we can see little bubbles. We can see little bubbles inside the, the colloid. So that is, so around, the cells around the outside then, those are the follicular cells. Those are the cells that are making the thyroid hormone. And um, so like I say, they're taking that thyroglobulin. So the little bubbles you're seeing on the inside, that's them interacting with the thyroglobulin. And they take that into themselves. And of course, they're also making the thyroglobulin in the first place. They're making that stored colloid. But they take it into themselves and then they, they convert that into, um, 
into the thyroid hormones. And these cells, so there's a single layer of cells surrounding the colloid. That's what's making the follicle. Imagine this is a single section through, right? We're looking at this in 2D. So imagine this was in 3D. These, this is a single layer of cells forming a ball with the thyroglobulin colloid on the inside. And those cells look, they look quite tall there, which means they're very active. So they can change their height. They can be quite columnar, they can be quite cuboidal, and they can be squamous. If they're squamous, they're not very active. You know, if they're flat, thin cells. If they're very tall cells, they're being very active. Um, and that's it, really. That's the, <laughs> the whole of the tissue. Look, wherever we go... Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? So wherever we go, that's what we see. Now, if I zoom in a bit, so let's go to... Um, that's now, I can't, that's, that's my 40 times objective, I thought it was, this is 400 times magnification now. So the cells we're seeing there are the follicular cells, the cells of the follicle as it were, those are the cells responsible for making the thyroid hormones 99.9% of the cells around there are follicular cells. The second cell type is a parafollicular cell. And the parafollicular cell, um, I think it's got a clear cytoplasm. It's often a, a less... It's, it's, the, the nucleus doesn't stain as darkly, but only, there are only about 0.1% of the cells here are parafollicular cells. Now there in the middle we can see a uh, blood vessel. Like I say there's really really rich blood supply so you can imagine those all these uh, follicular cells are up against um, capillaries. They're up against uh, blood vessels. So those that's the other thing we're seeing in here. Pretty much all of these gaps here lined by very flat cells. Look they're everywhere. See the flat cells? Those are, those are um, endothelial cells. Uh, endothelial cells lining, blood vessels lining, capillaries. So all of these spaces around here are going to be um, blood vessel channels. So you can see how the blood is right up against the the follicular cells. Now the parafollicular cells, why are they interesting? Oh, is that one there? Do you think? I mean, then they're not super reliable to identify with H and E staining, hematoxylin and eosin staining like this. But the parafollicular cells, um, they make calcitonin. Calcitonin has got nothing to do with regulating the metabolic rate of cells in the body. Calcitonin reduces blood calcium. So you've got to have just the right, just the right amount of calcium within a window in your blood. Pretty much all the cells in the body use calcium, need calcium to do their normal function. Calcitonin then reduces the amount of blood calcium, so it, it reduces the rate of osteoclasts, for example, which would release calcium from bone, and it encourages the kidneys to excrete calcium. Whereas the parathyroid glands produce parathyroid hormone, which does the opposite. Parathyroid hormone increases blood calcium, so it encourages the osteoclasts to remove bone and release calcium. It encourages um, more calcium to be absorbed from the food that you're eating and that sort of thing. In kids, um, calcitonin is really important. In that, that balance of calcitonin and parathyroid hormone is really important during development. But in adults, for example, if you had your thyroid gland removed, you would need to replace the thyroid hormones, but you don't need to replace the calcitonin apparently because it's the parathyroid hormone that's more important at making sure your blood calcium levels are at the right level. Anyway, let's, uh, that is probably a likely suspect, I would say, for a uh, parafollicular cell. Um, but that's it for the thyroid uh, gland. It is a lovely tissue, isn't it? Okay, so there's the thyroid gland. I'm on low power again, so four times, ten times, so 40 times magnification. Um, that's all clearly thyroid. Now if I slide to the right, there we go, there's the parathyroid. Now, I can just about get this entire parathyroid gland within the um, frame of the camera. I mean, I can get it easily within my microscope field of vision, but I can, 
Um, again, I don't know where this animal is from, but look that, look, that looks completely different, right? Completely different to the thyroid. Thyroid, parathyroid. It looks completely different because it's doing a completely different job. Well, I say a completely different job. The cells here are largely making parathyroid hormone and increasing blood calcium levels. So if we go, if we look a little bit more closely, we can see it looks, it looks pretty, pretty homogenous. We've got a lot of cells packed together there, those dark staining nuclei. Looks a bit like a golf course. Um, the spaces that we're seeing there are blood vessels. So again, this is another endocrine organ, so it's producing hormones that need to go into the blood. So it's got a rich capillary network up against all of these cells. So that's what we're seeing. All of these spaces here, look, there are some really good ones there cutting transverse section of little tiny blood vessels, little tiny capillaries, so that the parathyroid hormone that these cells are making can go into the blood and increase blood calcium levels. It's easy to remember that, isn't it? The parathyroid gland makes parathyroid hormone. Um, and it does, it kind of looks like um, streets when you're in a plane and you're looking down on a city and you're coming into land. But these cells look very homogenous, right? Well, Almost all of these cells are chief cells or principal cells that make parathyroid hormone. But there is another cell type in here. And the other cell type, other than the blood vessels, of course, uh, are the oxyphil cells. Um, if I go to a higher power again, so this is 400 times magnification. How bright are we there? Um, Now you can see how these cells look very similar. Apart from the spaces, which are blood vessels, we've got loads and loads of cells packed together here. They've got round nuclei. You can see nucleoli within them. They haven't got, they're not very big cells. There's not a lot of cytoplasm around the cells and they're all really, really packed together. So those are the chief cells. Those are the cells making parathyroid hormone. Now in amongst these, the oxyphil cells will be larger and have a bit more of a pink staining uh, cytoplasm. So you can see where we, where we see very flat cells, those are going to be the endothelial cells lining blood vessels. So we're not looking for those, but maybe is that one in there? Or a couple in there, maybe. Um, can I find an oxyphil cell? Confidently, probably not, but I don't know. It's um, so we're looking for, like I say, a larger cell with more cytoplasm around it. The cytoplasm you'd expect it to be staining because the cytoplasm of the chief cells is nice and pink. Now, what do the oxyphil cells do? Nobody knows, don't know, <laughs> which is. Which is fun in this day and age, right? Um, so the parathyroid glands are crucial for normal cellular function. And we understand what the chief cells do, but the other cells in here, no. Don't know what they do. They probably support the chief cells in some way. And you, you seem to get more of them as you grow older. Look, there's a bit of a capsule there. Um, but no, it's not clear what they do. Oh, is that one there? Do you think? Uh, see if I can kind of middle it up a bit. Mmm, it's a larger cell, small dark nucleus, cytoplasm around it that is staining, bit of a um, blank patch around the nucleus itself. Is that an oxyphil cell? Could be, um, but that's what that's what we mean by um, yeah. Anyway, but as you can see, if you're looking at the pituitary gland, what you're really interested in are all these um, these chief cells, and there's loads of them, and they all look the same, and they're all packed together, um, and that's the parathyroid gland. So that's us done. The thyroid gland. It's a large gland in the neck. Most of the cells, the follicular cells, are making thyroid hormones. 
which affect the other cells in the body um, and drive your metabolic rate. If you've got lots of thyroid hormone, you know, you burn more energy, um, you get skinny, you get hot. <laughs> if you don't have much thyroid hormone, the opposite happens. You get cold, you don't have much energy, you put on weight because your cells aren't very active, right? Bit, bit basic that, but you get, you get the idea. So that's the thyroid gland. The parathyroid glands are on the posterior surfaces of the thyroid gland. The other cells in the thyroid gland then, the parafollicular cells make calcitonin, which decreases blood calcium, whereas the parathyroid glands make parathyroid hormone, which increase blood calcium. Very strange. You've got these two different cell types living in the thyroid gland, doing having opposite functions, and yet the parathyroid nearby balances that all out neatly um there's no real rhyme or reason for this i doubt it's just it's just what is very strange very interesting though so hopefully now you've seen the histology of the thyroid gland if ever you see a microscope image of the thyroid gland you'll think ah i know what that is look at those big islands in there okay cool see you next week mm -hmm.